right, today I'm going to read Doña Esmeralda Who Ate Everything by Melissa de la Cruz. Once upon a time, in the middle of a group of 7,000 happy islands named after King Philip of Spain, there lived a lady named Doña Esmeralda. She had a big bouffant hairdo and was much smaller than you. She was about the size of a toddler, but she was very, very old. Do you know the word ancient? It means older than old, and that's how old Doña Esmeralda was. Doña Esmeralda had a voracious appetite. That means she was always hungry. Nothing ever satisfied her. If she could, she would eat everything in sight. But because she was small and forgotten, she had to settle for what she could get. And that meant leftovers. Lots and lots of leftovers. She became especially good at gobbling up what you and children like you didn't want to eat. Doña Esmeralda lived on eating children's uneaten plates and diet soda. To make it easier, she carried two straws, one for gulping down her diet soda and one to slurp up everything else. If you didn't like the taste of tofu, she ate it. Leftover liver and onions, she sucked it up with her straw. She supped on soggy Brussels sprouts and attacked all the asparagus. She munched on mushy mushrooms and gorged on gooey grapefruit. She feasted on fresh broccoli and scarfed up squishy sweet potatoes. She went to town on tiramisu and zoomed up zucchini bread. What's tiramisu? Ask your parents. They love it. Also, you should really eat your zucchini bread. It's yummy. And she gobbled on the jingling. Ugh, the jingling. No one likes jingling. Where did she put it all? She remained smaller than small. Some said it all went to her hair. She did have very, very big hair. Naughty children began to notice. Naughty children learned that all they had to say was, I don't want to eat this. And Doña Esmeralda would hear them. She had ears that were very attuned to what children were doing, which means she was very, very, very good at hearing. She would hear them push away from the table. She would hear the clang of the fork against the plate, the rustle of a napkin, the sniff of disdain, the complaint, the lament, the cry. She would wait until the coast was clear and pounce. Slurp! She tasted the tofu sucked up the leftover liver and onions, supped on soggy Brussels sprouts, attacked all the asparagus, munched on mushy mushrooms, gorged on gooey grapefruit, feasted on fresh broccoli, scarfed up squishy sweet potatoes, went to town on tiramisu, you know what that is by now, and zoomed up zucchini bread, which is very tasty. You should not have left it on your plate. She even gobbled on the ginling, Ugh, the ginling. No one likes ginling, except Doña Esmeralda. She ate every bit. Yuck. No matter where Doña Esmeralda went, she was always hungry, and she was always on the lookout for her next meal. Until one day, something happened that hadn't happened before. One day, she heard something she hadn't heard before. She heard the children eating. Not only eating, but feasting. Gobbling, chewing, slurping, munching, wolfing, gulping, tasting, licking, sipping, attacking, gorging, scarfing, and laughing. It was a party. A party with plenty of food that smelled and looked delicious. When it was over, there was nothing left on their plates. Not a crumb, not a speck, nothing. Nothing for Doña Esmeralda, who was very, very hungry. Doña Esmeralda was mad and hungry. She was hangry. And she was tired of eating what the children didn't want to eat. She was sick of leftovers. She wanted to eat what the children wanted to eat. The next day, she followed the children to a picnic by the zoo. This time, she crept out of the shadows, and when the children weren't looking, she ate what they ate. She slurped it up with her straw. Chicken nuggets, hamburgers, pizza, 
Mmm. Care Care, Chop Suey, Samosas, Yum. Milkshakes, Adobo, Pancit, Nam. Lumpia, Bulgogi, Tikka Masala, Burp. The food tasted delicious, and she ate more than she ever ate before. But Doña Esmeralda wasn't satisfied. Satisfied means happy, which she wasn't. She looked around. What else could she eat? She took out her straw and just started to slurp. She slurped the plates, the tables, the chairs. Yummy. She slurped a vine, a bush, and a tree. Hey. <laughs> She slurped up an elephant and a crocodile. Chomp! She slurped up a caribou, a monkey-eating eagle, and a giant vegetarian bat. Gulp! Doña Esmeralda still wanted more, so she slurped up the naughty children. Boo-hoo! She slurped up the good children. Very well. She slurped up their parents, too. It's our fault. And that still wasn't enough. But even Doña Esmeralda bit off more than she could chew when she slurped up all the diet soda. Her tummy began to rumble. Her bouffant was ready to tumble. And then, boom! Out went the parents. Out came the good and the naughty children. Out, out, out went the giant vegetarian bat, the monkey-eating eagle, the caribou, the crocodile, the elephant, the tree, bush and vine, and the chairs, table, and plates. Out came tikka masala, lumpia, oh me, bulgogi, pan sit, adobo, milkshakes, oh my, samosas, chop suey, care care, pizza, oh dear, hamburgers, chicken nuggets, oh no, and out out, out came the leftovers. Gentling, ugh, gentling. Zucchini bread, tiramisu, ay, ay, ay. Sweet potatoes, broccoli, grapefruit, ho, ho, ho. Mushrooms, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, jeez louise. Liver and onions, tofu, golly gee. That was the end of Doña Esmeralda. The end means, well, you know what it means. I pate. Without Doña Esmeralda, from then on, all children always ate everything on their plates. But the naughty ones still try to this day to say, I don't want to eat this. And they hope that Doña Esmeralda will return with her straw. Hopefully, she does not slurp you up, too. The end.